feet and shine inside me, oh yeah First, put all your cameras on. Maybe you can hear me, maybe not. We're fixing some technical yeah. issues. Yeah, we're good? Okay. Yeah. Yay! Welcome, everyone. It's so good to see so many amazing friends from all over the world. Um, so if you can put your camera on, that would be incredible because we're here together fr live from the studio in Casablanca, Morocco. And we are here to celebrate the 60th anniversary of the human space flight. All right, uh, Mehdi, hello. I am amazing, how are you? How are you feeling about tonight and about this global celebration happening in every corner of the planet? Yay, and just wanna make sure, Mehdi. All right, so we are, also dealing with some few technical things. Okay, yeah, we're good. Yeah, now it's, it's good. Amazing. I mute. <laughs> oh, there we go. Um, so perhaps we're going to start by asking our friends to share where they are calling us from. So if you want to put in the chat where you are calling in, that would be fantastic. All right, can we see a few? New York, all right. We got New York, Indianapolis, Brussels, Europe, Casablanca, Paris, Oh my gosh, look at that. Morocco, Fez, Rabat. What else? Where else are you from? Central Africa. This is incredible. Yay. We truly are a global community. Ottawa, Canada. There we go. What else? St. Paul, Minnesota. Voila. Amazing. California. I love it. So I'm going to start with a quote um, from our friend Yuri, who was the first human to orbit planet Earth. Circling the Earth in my orbital spaceship, 
I marveled at the beauty of our planet. People of the world, let us safeguard and enhance this beauty, not destroy it. So as many of you know, I think I know many of you, but those who don't know me, my name is Yasmin al ambassador for Africa of the Dream Team. And just so you know, Yuri's Night was founded by Loretta, who is an incredible human being with such global vision. And her mission, quite simple actually, it is to use space to bring the world together, to empower the greatest parts of who we are and give vision to where we're going. So Mehdi, why Yuri's Night in Africa this year? And tell us where we are and how La Startup Factory and you are innovating, not just Morocco, but the entire African continent. So uh, thank you, Yasmin, and uh, welcome everybody uh, uh, to Casablanca, to Morocco, to Africa. And uh, we are super excited to host tonight uh, this um, uh, beautiful event. Um, yeah, Yasmin, um, as you say, we are in Casablanca at the Startup Factory, and what we are doing is we uh, are here to help um, you know the new generation of um, you to be a leader of tomorrow. So basically, we innovate uh, with them in uh, different ways. So we help them to work with big corporate and deploy innovation. We incubate, accelerate them, and also we finance them. And we try at the end of the day to change their mi mi mindset. So um, during the last four years, we was, uh, you know, um, fortunate to, to help more than 100,000 youth here in Africa you know, to go to the next step. So this is what we are doing here at La Startup Factory. That is amazing. And Mehdi, you are a true innovator and you always inspire me. So thank you so much for the incredible work you're doing. One of the big questions that I've been sitting with is how do we spark the space industry from Africa? So I'm gonna call in on my dear friend, Alex Carl, who's actually tuning in all the way from Europe. He is Yuri's Night ambassador for Europe, Dream Team. Alex, welcome. Thank you, Yasmin. Glad to be here. Can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you from outer space. Yay! Right. <laughs> so tell us, um, Alex, what is your vision with space? Why space? And how can we on the African continent contribute to this global space conversation tonight? Well, my, my personal take on space is what else? Because space is amazing. It, it is, there's, there's something for everybody, whether you're a doctor, a lawyer, an engineer, a scientist, a teacher, anything is related to space. So um, it is so rich and so rewarding. I, I think there's, there's no better, better way to spend your time. Uh, in terms of Africa, um, um, it's funny that you asked me that question because I, I got asked that question before. A couple of years ago, I was in Nigeria and uh, I was there at the, uh, the space agency and they also asked like, how, how can we get involved more with, with space guys? So uh, I see this, this seems to be a common theme across the continent. And um, I've been thinking about that a bit. And I think the, um, the answer would be um, Africa needs to be proactive. Um, don't wait for anyone uh, to ask you to join. Bring your ideas. You, you have so many young people on the continent. Um, <clears throat> there is so much brain power, so much opportunity, um, so much talent. Um, just bring your ideas and, and do, do projects, bring it forward, and then extend your hand. Uh, say like, hey, Europe, hey, America, Australia, wherever you want, and say like, we got this, let's, let's work together. So I think this, this is the way forward for, for Africa. I love that, Alex. Thank you so much for sharing your wisdom. And I just heard from you that you work directly with an astronaut. Tell us about that. How is that experience working directly with an astronaut? <laughs> Well, yeah, so I work at the uh, European Astronaut Center, and my boss is actually an astronaut. Um, but uh, to let you in on the secret, they're just people like you and me. So, <laughs> so it's, um, 
of course it's it's nice because sometimes they, they share stories or um, you have um, um, it's kind of motivating you know like it, spending time with people who like you think like hey they, they've been to space and this is something to, to look forward to and um, you can see they're good at what they do and um, that I think motivates the team so this is this is always nice I love that thank you Alex so well it's an honor to have you with us and we are team humanity all of us together from all over the world not just in Africa literally every corner of the planet tonight so what is exciting, I uh, did some background research. I wanted to understand how many African Americans have been to space. And just for some brief backstory, there has been 553 people who have reached Earth orbit, and only 15 of them are African Americans. So there is so much potential for the African continent to be part of the conversation, to go to space, to build rockets, for our young engineers to also you know, be part of the innovation. This is why I love what Mehdi was talking about earlier in terms of not only inspiring the young generation, but also giving them the tools and the finances to be able to dream and to go beyond the earth into the universe. Like I'm doing currently, I'm traveling all the way to space. I believe I'm going to the moon tonight. So one, <laughs> one really fun fact is that um, I definitely want to go to space, but what's really cool is that we are all going to get to go to space in our generation. And that is exciting to think that in a few years we're going to be able to travel to, um, you know, as a we're going to journey to outer space for vacation. Why not? So I'm going to um, invite Alder. I don't know if you're here with us. Um, he is coming all the way from the United States of America. If you are here, say hello. Alder Riley, are you with us? And if you're not, we can come back to you. And I'm gonna invite Stephanie Wong, who's calling us from New York. This woman is absolutely stunning. She has such vision and talks a lot about how everything connects. So Stephanie, tell us your vision for the world. Thank you so much, Yasmin. Yes, mean, it's such an, uh, so wonderful to be here. I'm so glad that this is happening. Um, I'm Stephanie Wang, and I'm a wellness entrepreneur and also um, creator and host of a podcast called How Things Connect, which is all about sharing wisdom and insight on empowerment, healing, and evolution, uh, both on a personal and on a planetary level. And my vision, well, let me just share my vision and then I want to share the vision and how it relates to tonight's topic. So, you know, the reason why, why How Things Connect interests me and is because we, how do I say this? In this current generation that, in this current time that we're all in, we're really going through um, exponential changes and that will, that's this decade. And with that, we need to really be much more aware of how we're living by relating, because that's really, really crucial to how we can create, um, how we can survive, first of all, as a human species, how we can thrive, and um, how we won't be destroying the world that we live in. And that starts, that's on both levels. That starts from um, within in terms of really connecting to our all aspects of ourselves, heart, mind, body, and spirit. And then that extends into how that's reflected into the world um, on a planetary level, how we connected to nature, how we connected to the ecosystems that we are all in, that we share. How do the ecosystems all over the world connect with each other and how are we all connected to the planet? So the theme of tonight's, um, tonight's conference is so amazing because the idea that when you're in space you can see this blue marble this beautiful beautiful vibrant place that we are all citizens of regardless of where we come from what religion what race it doesn't matter and that it's so beautiful to really acknowledge that it gives us perspective and how we're really completely connected of whether we like it or not. And we really need to honor that and honor each other as a global human community. Thank you. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Stephanie. And I love how you speak a lot about the inner and the outer space. 
you know, not just you know, going outward, but also the inner journey of who we are and our own development. So it's, it's so beautiful. Thank you so much, Stephanie, for sharing and joining us from New York. Um, so next, I would like to invite um, Alder, if you're here. You know, he's someone I recently met, thank you, thanks to Loretta, and he is really um, using this, the power of technology, Clubhouse, which is this new innovation that is really connecting the world from all corners of the planet, um, and thinking about how we could spark the space in industry um, in Africa and everywhere. So Alder, if you're here, please let us know. We'd love to hear from you and for us to say hello. Um, until then, I want to invite... Um, oh. Yes, ma'am? Yes, Sorry, Alex. This, this is Alex. Um, my boss is actually trying to get into the chat room, so oh someone has to let goodness. him in. Amazing, all right. We will so. make sure he gets in. What, a, what an honor <laughs> to have him join us. <laughs> All right, we will make sure, Mehdi, and uh, we have, yes, okay, cool. I just get to do me right now and just talk to all of you. This is cool. I am actually experiencing innovation all the way live from Morocco in a studio that is really amazing. Look at the background. I mean, this is so cool. <laughs> Don't you think? Yay. <laughs> so um, I would love to, um, you know, maybe ask, we have an actually a very incredible woman that I recently met uh, when I was in Fez, and her name is Zakia al -Yubi. If you are with us and can put your camera on, I would love for you to tell us about this incredible vision that you have around the cultural cafe to bring humanity together from all over the world in Fez. Welcome, Zakia. Uh, thank you so much. Well, um the idea of the cafe is to have a cultural cafe that we don't have much in fast and we don't have in this in this way that I want to start. The idea of the cafe is to have uh, people come in, artists, uh, space for artists, like all kinds of art. They can do exhibition, they can work there. And at the same time, I want people to know more about the Moroccan culture uh, and the Moroccan craft. So the idea is to have the craftsman to come and in a workshop of two to three hours, they can make something like, for example, with Cooper, they can make Cooper, uh, Cooper plate and um, the clients or the tourists who come, they know all about that craft. It can be a Cooper, it can be Zlige, they can go, know all the, the steps that they go through and they can make something and take it with them. So that's one of the fabulous ideas like that will be there that does not exist in FAS. And also like um, have more, more activities like storytelling because I, I am a storyteller myself. So storytelling in a Moroccan like culture way and um, also like dressing up where we can show our Moroccan fancy dresses that we have or jalabas. So lots of things that can go on in a cafe for people who can come and exchange cultures, whether Moroccans or foreigners. Foreigners can know more about Morocco and also Moroccans can know about the other foreigners. That's the idea I have about the culture cafe. Amazing, Zakia. Thank you so, so much for sharing your wisdom. It was such a, I literally met you on the streets. <laughs> that was so cool. <laughs> And uh, thank you for welcoming us in your beautiful home as well, which is also connected. I mean, I really love to think about space, not just going outward, but also, you know, us coming together as a community from around the world and, you know, just sharing space, physical spaces. So um, we have the honor to have Luca with us, who is um, apparently Alex's boss. <laughs> we are so happy to have you. Tell us about you and tell us everything. Hello, everybody. Thanks for, uh, for inviting me. I, I'm nobody's boss. I work with Alex um, as, uh, for, for now as for astronaut support. And so he sent, me, he sent me a link and told me, hey, why don't you join? And, uh, you know, I, I'm Sicilian. So uh, about one hour flight from Africa. So I felt that I was right at home when, uh, when he invited me. Uh, my name is Luca Parmitano. I am an astronaut with the European Space Agency. I flew in 2013 for the first time 
for 166 days on the space station. And then I went back last year uh, in 2019, actually, um, and, uh, in July and came back last year at, in, in uh, February 2020 after I spent another 200 days in orbit on the International Space Station. Two, um, two flights for expedition, 36, 37, 16, 61. Um, two flights with the, with the Soyuz, uh, the first time with the TMA-M model and then with the MS. Both times I was the pilot. The second time I was also the uh, space station commander for Expedition 61. Fantastic experience. Uh, it's really, uh, it's really the opportunity of a lifetime, if I may say so myself, and I'm happy to share any time. The, the link to Yuri's night for me is actually that both times I launched from pad 39, which is uh, the same pad that was used by Yuri Gagarin uh, on his historic flight uh, six years ago, almost six years ago. So um, very, very uh, grateful, very excited for the opportunity and very happy to see uh, all your faces. and. I, I have a few minutes if you if you have any questions that you want to ask. I don't know how this works. I have no idea. So I'm 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 just here. Uh, happy happy to Well Luca, let me tell you, we don't know either. <laughs> We're co creating this experience together. That's the cool part about innovation and dreaming and then collaboration. I really loved what you said that you're not Alex's boss, you're collaborating together. And that is what it takes for us to, you know, be Team Humanity co-create together the vision that we foresee for the world. So thank you, Luca, for sharing that. And I do have one question. It's a very simple one, which is that experience of the overview effect. I know my dear friend um, Rachel from Space for Humanity talks a lot about this, and Frank White talk a lot about the overview effect and leaving the Earth and seeing the Earth from, from above. Like, tell us about that experience for you. How was your overview effect moment when you left? So uh, the, uh, I was interviewed actually by the person that invented the term overview effect. I think his name is Frank White, uh, is a journalist and wrote a book. And um, uh, about six months ago, he interviewed me about, about it. There is, there is really no way to describe the overview effect because it affects us differently. Um, Everybody is affected differently by the view of planet Earth seen from, from the distance. What I can tell you maybe is a little bit of what happened to me the first time that I flew uh, to the International Space Station. You know, it takes, it takes eight minutes and 48 seconds to get into orbit. Can you guys still hear me? Very well. Oh, okay, because my, my screen is frozen. So I was saying it, it takes eight minutes and 48 seconds to get into orbit. You, you go from zero speed, zero altitude to 250 kilometers and 28,000 kilometers an hour. And for me, the first time and, and the second time I flew at night, it was about one o'clock in the morning when, when we launched. So it was very dark outside. And again, uh, all the emotion and the dynamics of getting into space and then you're in space, it's dark. I, uh, the Soyuz has a little window cover. And of course, as soon as I was, as I was uh, uh, weightless, I decided to open, to open this cover and to look outside. And then I, that something I, can, I will never forget was my first sunrise from, from orbit. It was over the Sea of Japan and, and the sunlight seen from orbit is not at all yellow. It's, it's incredibly white, is the purest source of light that you can imagine. And the way it comes, it comes all of a sudden. You have this inkling that something is about to happen. And then all at once the, the atmosphere basically explodes in color all at once. You have, uh, you know, first, first the, the, the initial pinks and yellow and red, and then all at once you have all the, the explosion of blue and all, all the unimaginable shades of blue and all these layers. So the atmosphere show up and 
And then you start seeing the contrast between the land and the water. And that moment just took my breath away. It literally hit me with an incredibly incredible sharpness. And I turned I turned right to, to look at my crewmates and they were they were smiling because they were waiting for me to see that they had experienced it before and so they were waiting for me to see it and 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 see my reaction and what happened at that moment once we all had shared that moment it felt as if from from being a crew we had turned into brothers and sisters you know these were professional astronauts that I was flying with, uh, Karen Nyberg on her second flight, Fyodor, uh, your chicken flying uh, on his third flight, and then me as a rookie. And all at once it was, everything was level. We had all seen and experienced an incredible moment. And the thought that, you know, after, after 10 years almost, the thought that comes to mind is if, if everybody had that understanding of the earth being one place that we are all sharing, a lot of the conversations will be different. Story. I don't you guys know. still there? Yeah, we're here. Can you hear us? Oh, yeah, now I can. Awesome. Yay. Amazing. Luca, you're incredible. We're, I mean, wow. Thank you so much for flying all the way to Africa tonight to be with us <laughs> before the global live stream. Thank you for sharing. Um, your story and, and really inspiring. We're very inspired by you. Um, I would love to uh, sh ask maybe Elder to tell us a little bit more about you know what you're doing with the giant um, you know your community on Clubhouse. I see you having all these conversations that are incredibly interesting. And tell us more and why space and how can Africa be part of the conversation? And welcome, of yeah, course. Uh, welcome to you. Africa. <laughs> thank, thank you very much for thank you very much for having me um yeah it's it's absolutely incredible so um i run i run small steps and giant leaps uh we're the largest uh group of space enthusiasts on clubhouse uh about a dozen astronauts uh nasa officials people from all over the globe rocket scientists mm -hmm. uh all kinds of stuff. and it's just absolutely incredible seeing the um breadth of enthusiasm and skills that people bring to the problems of space exploration. You know, it's a very much a, a frontier that we all, you know, have dreams about of, you know, perhaps going out there and studying or maybe building new lives or maybe creating art, all these wonderful uh, expressions of humanity. Um, and it's just great to be a part of that community. Uh, Luca, I, I really can't, I can't do better than, you know, follow like someone who's actually been to space. It's, it's amazing. Um, so I'm just I'm just thrilled. Um, in terms of the discussion of Africa, one of the most important uh, events we do every single week is a multi-hour conversation on Wednesdays, all about uh, opportunities for building the space industry in Africa. Um, we bring in investors, we bring in uh, business developers, we bring in technologists, um, and we just kind of like brainstorm. All right, you know, what are uh, low-hanging fruit in terms of like is it setting up educational programs, is it uh, communicating with governments, um, all kinds of things. Um, so, you know, and it's one of many conversations, but it's one that's really, uh, really important to me because our, our club motto and, you know, what I firmly believe is that space is for everyone. You know, every, every walk of life, every nationality, every background, space is for everyone. And the more things that we can do uh, to encourage and uh, support more people feeling like they can have a seat at the table, um, regardless of what they professionally are, professionally, uh, regardless of where they come from in their quote unquote day job or daily life, um, I think we'll all get closer to this dream that we all have. So that, that's my perspective. Love that. Thank you, Alder. It's a pleasure to meet you. And thank you so much for making sure that we have countries represented across the continent and sharing with your friends. Um, we actually have um, a dear sister who is joining us from, uh, I believe, Rabat, Morocco. Uh, she's a beautiful singer, and I want to put her on the spot because that's what we do. Um, we put people on just, you know, they show up. And I'm like, all right, it's your time. Um, I would love for you to sing a song to bring us together through your voice 
Um, I think you have a beautiful voice and we're ready. Miriam, take us on a journey. <laughs> Wow, thank you so much, Yasmin. Thank you for having me. And hi, everybody. My name is Maryam Dehbi. I'm a singer-songwriter. Um, I'm typically based in Boston, but I'm in Rabat in my childhood bedroom right now. And um, I've been, I've been uh, working on some music over the past few years, and I just uh, thought I'd share with you a couple that may or may not want to make you want to connect with others a little bit more and with yourself, yeah. maybe with your past self. We'll see. Um, so this song is called Solace. And let me know if you can hear the guitar okay, because that would be important. Can you hear it okay? Thank you. This is for you who live for love, but for love. Stop to live for you who give so much, you forget who you want to be. So much. Thank you for having me. Thanks, Yasmin, for the platform. I appreciate it. You're amazing. I can't wait to come to your global concerts around the world. That was amazing. Will you please send some love to Miriam on the chat? Lots of love. <laughs> thank you. Thank you all so much. I can feel it. Thank you. <laughs> Beautiful. Wow. I mean, there's so many wonderful people, wonderful friends that I've met all over the world. And I, I don't know if Gopi is here, but Gopi is one of those people who really inspire me. And, you know, he is from India. And, you know, just his journey is incredible. Uh, Gopi, if you're there, say hello. 
I would love for you to share some words of wisdom because that's who you are. I saw your name on there. <laughs> And if Gopi is not there, Anastasia, who are you? I see you smiling and taking notes and being inspired. Tell us who you are and where are you calling us from? Hi, everyone. Um, my name is uh, Anastasia, as Yasmin just said. And uh, thank you so much for having me tonight. Uh, I met Yasmin last week, <laughs> I met her. And I'm really happy to be here to learn more about um, what the global community is doing. And I'm calling from New York and just excited to be here. So thank you so much. Beautiful. And Anastasia, where are you from? I'm from Moldova, um, Chisinau originally, but I moved to New York uh, 14 years ago. So yeah, I've been here since then. And what is, what is your life's mission? My life's mission? Um, I think I'm still discovering it for myself, but uh, Definitely, I would like to bring everybody into a community so that everybody feels belong the way that I um, I feel right now, as it took me some time to do so, um, immigrating to United States and just um, uh, realizing that I have a community here as well, just as I did in Moldova. And I just want to bring that community to everybody else. Beautiful. And you know that you always have a community you belong to the world yeah. and to planet Earth. I know. <laughs> Team yeah, humanity, I, yay! <laughs> All yeah, I love the space. It's, it's a global community and I love to be part of it. Thank you, Esme. I love that. Thank you, Anastasia. Um, so, who else would like to share some inspiration or perhaps why they're here tonight? Like, what is, what is the one thing that you're most excited about, uh, you know, in terms of this evening, this next couple hours, we're gonna hear from so many amazing souls and human beings, including Richard Branson, Loretta herself, who's found, founded Yuri's Night for like over 20 years now. And of course, Sian, one of our dear friends from the space community is actually going to space in September. And that was her dream. We're so excited about that. So who else would like to say a few words? Uh, I can't see who's here, so I'm just uh, guessing. <laughs> but if anyone would like to share I see uh, Gaosu would like to say something. Gaosu, are um, you with us? Yes, me and Gaosu actually um, chatted and sent a message to everyone saying he's deaf. And he needs an interpreter or caption or captioning so he can hear what's going on. Amazing. Stephanie, do I hear that you're volunteering yourself to be the interpreter for tonight? <laughs> um, I, I actually was typing the Mer Merrin's um, song as it was happening, but I can't. It's very fast right now, so I'm doing my best to type it in the... Amazing. Well, so the... just so you know, Gaosu is an incredible uh, young person I met through the YES program, which is a program aimed to break down stereotypes about Africa in the United States. And uh, I wanted to make sure that we had subtitles, but uh, Gasu, I'm very sorry uh, on behalf of humanity that we did not have subtitles tonight so that you can follow us. So we'll make sure we do that next time. Um, what else, who else is here? <laughs> Hello, Earth, can I, can I hear someone, Todd? Um, Zainab, Hikma, Aida, I know you're here. Say a word. <laughs> Hello there. If James. no one is saying anything. Hi, how are you? Thank you so much for tonight. I'm calling in from Sweden, but I'm myself Moroccan. Um, but I wanted to tell you, I wanted to share with you this book um, that my father gave me when I was 12. That was 1996. It's um, it's about the Sovietic space program. And we're talking tonight about Yuri Gagarin. We're giving homage to Yuri Gagarin. But we should also not forget uh, Valentina Tereshkova, who is the first woman in space. If Yuri Gagarin was the first man, she was the first woman cosmonaut uh, in space. And uh, we know that the Soviet Union is gone. We know also that 
um, the space race was political in its essence, but it actually inspired us all, after all. We are not from the Soviet Union. Soviet Union is long gone, but we still celebrate Yuri and Yuri's night because we're celebrating humanity, and that's beautiful. Wow. And James, so that's amazing. I remember seeing your, uh, that you speak the region. I was very intrigued by that. So tell yes. us about your journey and how did you get involved in space? Like, what was your inspiration? Well, I mean, I'm involved in space just by being a space nerd. That's it. <laughs> I have um, recently actually got into real space projects, but this is in early stages. So what happened is that, um, yeah, I, I got involved with astronomy at an early stage, at an early age. Uh, thanks to, to books from my father, and uh, let's say that I had a cool uncle <laughs> who gave me the right resources. But then, of course, if you know about astronomy, you would obviously uh, be interested in space exploration, and especially human space exploration. And um, how I got to meet you, actually, is thanks to Alda and thanks to Clubhouse. Uh, Alda has done an amazing job. Uh, the first time I got to uh, see Alder on stage, it was on um, what he just talked about, uh, the weekly uh, African space industry room that he holds on uh, Small Steps Giant Leaves. And um, yeah, I met amazing people there. And uh, it's, it's a weekly room that's recurring. And uh, as Alder said, uh, we get to meet really cool people uh, and uh, have great discussions. So um, as I said, I'm a space nerd, that's all. <laughs> Beautiful. And one last question before you uh, yeah. journey with us into the world for the global live stream, which is, by the way, happening in 12 minutes. We're almost there. We are in Africa yeah. right now, and we're going to be joining the whole entire planet. How cool is that, Mehdi? How cool is that? This is a super opportunity to, uh, you know, to, uh, this is a super opportunity to know much more about what's happening, uh, you know, um, outside Africa and meet the, uh, you know, the other people. I think um, there's a lot of African that dreams about space, and I'm one of them. Maybe my next startup will be related to the space industry. This is a dream. I don't know when I, I will be able to do that, <coughs> but I'm inviting anyone that wants to, you know, create something uh, in startup about space, you know, to, to talk about it, and maybe we can do something together. Well, I will make sure that you know all of us connect because I feel like just in this room alone, we have all the solutions, all the skills, and all the visions and dreams and energy to make it happen. So yeah. that's amazing, Mehdi. So back to you, James. Um, my question is, so as a Moroccan, Sw Sweden person, um, how do you envision giving back to Africa? Well, this is why I'm here, actually. And uh, to answer <laughs> Mehdi, uh, we have uh, started something, me and uh, uh, a group of Moroccans who are much more involved in the space industry than I am. I mean, uh, real rocket scientists from Morocco working uh, for ESA, working for NASA. Uh, these are bright minds that want to give back and they want to give back to Africa what they learned uh, abroad. And I would be happy to connect with you, Mehdi, and uh, let you know about the project. Sure. As I said earlier, it's still in the early stage. That's why we don't talk much about it, um, but it's it's amazing that it's happening. Uh, and um, uh, in this journey, we got to meet a lot of amazing people and a lot of uh, uh, young talents, not only from Morocco, but from, from all over Africa. That is wonderful. You know, one of the things that, even though that sparked um, a thought, which is when you said that, um, you know, it's still early stage, this is what we don't talk about it. You know, if Laura Loretta was here, she would say, you, because people cannot help you if you don't speak about your mission and your yes. vision. <laughs> right, Alex? That's true. That's true. <laughs> I need my co-founders with me to be able to talk about it. I love that. Thank you so yeah. much, James. It is a pleasure to, to, for you to be with us. Um, you know, I don't know if Todd and Judith are here. I know they're joining us all the way from Minneapolis. Um, would you like to say a few words? Uh, this is Todd. Hello, everyone. Greetings from St. Paul, Minnesota. Here's Judy. She'll step in for a minute. We, we were just saying we think it's a beautiful thing seeing all of you, all of you together. And we, um, we want to come along on the mission to space, whatever that means, the mystery of it all. So thank you. Beautiful, Todd. Thank you. 
Anyone else would like to share a few words? We, we have about 10 minutes before the official launch, um, and we're going to do the countdown together to join uh, the live stream, global live stream. So any, anyone else would like to share anything or ask a question or you know, sing a song or dance, anything? I can share something if you guys can hear or see me. Mark, you're with us. Oh my gosh, you're still awake. Amazing. All the way from the <laughs> Netherlands. Yeah, welcome everyone. I'm, uh, I'm walking my dog actually in the middle of the night and it's, uh, I uh, wanted to, uh, you know, support uh, Yasmin and everybody who's, uh, who's here tonight on this uh, beautiful mission with, uh, yeah, the, the one thing that connects us all, which which is space, you know, the space between, it's the silence between the nodes. It's, uh, you know, if you pay attention to it, it's, uh, it's the most extraordinary thing. And uh, yeah, creating this space, you know, from Africa and all these different parts of the world in a time where everybody's locked in and literally has a lack of space, um, you know, physically and I think mentally also we could use some space. Uh, so, I'm a big supporter of, of this whole mission and I'm happy to help people connect the dots in any way. Uh, I'm building this platform called Inner Peace Network and uh, our mission is to co-create a better world with a peaceful state of mind. And our, uh, our tagline uh, is uh, the space to be. <laughs> so we have a deep uh, connection with space as well and uh, anybody that feels called to collaborate or partner, uh, feel free to reach out and uh, happy to uh, help you out as well. So much love from Amsterdam and uh, I'm looking forward uh, to the next uh, speakers. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. It's a pleasure to have you with us and uh, you know, say hello to Blue, uh, your, <laughs> your friend. Um, I know that Titreet is with us. Uh, can you hear us? All right, you know, I wish I could see all the faces. I realize that I don't know who's in the room, so I would just invite you to take leadership and say hello and share anything that you wish because that's what life is about. Yes, Min? Yes, Alex. <laughs> yes, I, I would like, I, I've spoken before, but I'd like to, to share something since we have five minutes left and I think it's a nice transition from, from us being here in Africa and transitioning to the global scale. Um, you might know what, what I'm referring to, as I told you, uh, I think it was last week or so, but I want to share that with the whole, whole group here. And it's actually a quote from um, um, the Saudi astronaut. So in 1985, Sultan bin Salman al Saud went with the space shuttle for a week to space. And um, he has a quote I use, use often when I give presentations. Um, because for me, it just demonstrates something that I never having been to space, but I truly believe in and I, and I think um, we all share that. So he said, um, on the first day being in space, everybody pointed down at their country and said, there, this is where I'm from. There's my country. On the second day, people were just pointing at their continents. And by the fifth day, Everybody just pointed at Earth and said, there, that's home. So we're all one. Wow, Alex, amazing. Thank you for sharing that. I, um, you know, I think I saw in the news today that the, there's the first uh, woman, Arab woman uh, who's going to be an astronaut uh, from the UAE. And that just makes me proud uh, as, a, as an Arab woman to see women taking the lead and go into space as well. So uh, more women, more young people, more Africans uh, in, this, in this field. That would be, that's the, that's the intention, that's the goal. Um, Hisham, aren't you in Lebanon or where are you in the world? And, and tell me, why are you here tonight with us? Hello. And we want to see you. There yes, you I'm here. Yeah, hi. <laughs> so I'm actually in Indianapolis. I'm doing my medical training here. So I moved from Lebanon a few months ago. <laughs> uh, and I'm interested uh, in the night, first because uh, 
I miss you so much. So I've met Yasmin 10 years ago. <laughs> and then I was interested on in what the night's gonna be about, learning more and seeing uh, people from all around the world. So that was a very interesting event. So uh, Hisham was part of the, also the YES program. We have a few friends from the YES community which was founded after 9-11 uh, as a goal to break down misconceptions about the Arab world and Africa. So Hisham, it's a pleasure to have you with us. Uh, thank you for always just being you, <laughs> which is the gift. Um, thank you. Thank you. Anyone else would like to say a few words? We are three minutes to launch. Um, so any final words, any, may, or maybe Miriam can close us with a final song if she's still here. I'd be more than happy to. Yay. <laughs> I love your readiness. I wish I had written a, a song about going into space. Maybe that'll be the next thing for me. <laughs> um, Let's see, what can I sing? That's not gonna take. This song is called Smile 2020. Pedal to the metal and the metal melts away from me. Like the plans I'd made for 2020. How do I know where the road goes? Is this change in my favor? Loved one, hearing the blunt and the thoughtful words. Through thick and thin, you've been swimming with me. mess I didn't choose to make but I travel this road again if I can come out a better man come out a better Woman, come out a better human, come out, come out, come out, come out. Thank you. Yay, Miriam. Thank you so much. That was beautiful. That was good timing. Perfect. <laughs> Perfect timing. Divine timing. So Mehdi, uh, close us off with a few, your message to the African community, to the youth, to the girls of tomorrow. What do you have to tell them as we go into the next part of the journey? Yeah, so let's dream. Um, let's work together, hand on the hand, to send our first uh, African to the space. <laughs> Love that. Thank you so much, Mehdi. Thank you for having us in your space, I about space. That is incredible. And thank you to all of my friends and our African community and global community 
from every corner of the planet. Thank you for joining tonight. And we're gonna transition now together into the global live stream. And I believe we're gonna share a link on the chat for the global live stream so you could watch at your ease, grab your tea or food or go to the bathroom, whatever you need to do. It's three hours. It's gonna be recorded, so don't feel bad if you, sleep, if you fall asleep. Uh, you can always watch it again tomorrow or after tomorrow. The space conversation is ongoing. You are part of it, and I love you all. Thank you so much for just being who you are. You inspire me every day. And thank you, Mehdi. You are welcome, Yasmin, and thank you so much. <laughs> Au revoir. that we can be proud of.